In this segment, I will take a look at the non-circular ducts. So far, everything that I have analyzed was based on pipe, and the cross-section of a pipe was a circular. So now, what happens if the cross-section is not circular? So the question is actually related to this. Let's take a look at rho v d over nu. So this is my Reynolds number. I said that if this is less than 2000, you're going to get laminar. Now, what is more specifically this? It's a D diameter. Interesting. Okay, what if it's not a circular, right? In order to account for that, I'm going to make a little bit of a deviation over here and I'm going to call this DH. And DH is the hydraulic diameter. And the way hydraulic diameter is defined is 4 times the cross sectional area divided by wetted perimeter. I usually hear students ask me about this. Why is there a 4 here? Why not just simply cross sectional area divided by wetted perimeter? Let's take a circular cross section. What will happen? Let's calculate it. 4 times. What's the cross-sectional area of a circular pipe? It's pi d squared over 4 divided by what is the wetted perimeter of... So let me draw over here. So if you think about it, the wetted perimeter, the fluid is in over here, and it's going either inside to the page or outside towards me, right? But the wetted perimeter is going to be all this, okay? And what this wetted perimeter is going to be, it will be pi d, right? So you can see over here, I get a D. That's why I have a 4 over here. If I didn't have a 4, even for circular cross sections, I'm not going to get the Reynolds number that I want. Okay? All right. So let's proceed and uh, calculate uh, for a few geometries. Okay? So let, let me go with annulus. It's a fairly commonly used geometry in fluid dynamics. Okay, let's calculate for this annulus. To be specific, inside of it, like a solid block, okay, and I have flow over here towards me or away from me, and I define the inside radius as Ri, outside radius as Ro. So if I calculate the dh for this case, what I'm going to get is four times what is the cross-sectional area of this, right? That will be pi. R O square minus R I square. How about the wetted perimeter? It will be this plus this. Because those two surfaces are being wetted by the existence of the fluid, right? So let me add them up and see what happens. So that will be 2 pi R O plus 2 pi R I. So I can do some mathematics over here, so maybe simplify this, so I'm going to get myself 4 pi r o square minus r i square divided by 2 pi times r o plus r i. So you can see pi's cancel and this becomes 2. I can do something else over here as well. So if you take a look at it, what is r o square minus r i square, square? So that will be r o minus r i times R O plus R I, right, divided by R O plus R I, so these cancel, so you can see this becomes 2 times R O minus R I. And actually, if you want to write it this way as well, this can also be diameter outside minus diameter inside for an analysis, okay? Another aspect that I want to touch upon related to this non-circular ducts is related to this Darcy friction factor being 64 over Reynolds and that was actually C and this is 64 for a circular pipe that's what I said when I was deriving this Darcy friction factor for a laminar flow. Now I'm gonna revisit this and take a look okay for analysis for analysis let's plot this by di by do okay so this will be less than one as you can see and let's take a look at the C value over here, and this can be tabulated. And I mentioned this over there as well. 
but the ranges that I see are typically between, uh, let's say, 0 0.1 is going to give me right around 89. And I can tabulate this up to 1, and I'll get 96. Okay. So the point here is that these are fairly close to 64. You will be undershooting, right? Your F value will be lower if you just simply go 64. So we need to account for this. Another geometry that is fairly common in fluid mechanics or dynamics is the rectangle. And let's actually go ahead and calculate dh for that. It's going to be 4 times, um, what is the cross-sectional area? Let's actually draw it rectangle. Okay, so this will be, let's call this A, let's call this B. Okay, what will be my cross-sectional area? 4 times A, that B, right? How about weighted parameter? It's going to be 2A plus 2B. If I simplify this, I'll get 2AB divided by A plus B. Okay? And this A by B is also plotted as a function of C. And let's say that I have myself 0 0.1. And in the case, it's going to be 84. And if I have 1, now it's actually reducing. When I increase my B ratio, I'm going to get 56. So you can see I'm still in the range of 64. But you can account for this in your analysis. And I do recommend you do this. Many different references that list all these information for you.